A while back, a YouTube user asked me how to respond to an atheist who says, there is no evidence for God. This is important because there is no evidence for God is a shibboleth for new atheists. It's their version of jet fuel can't melt steel beams. Now, you should be familiar with apologetic arguments for God's existence, the Kalam argument, the contingency argument, the fine-tuning argument, etc., and you should know how to defend these against common objections, but please be aware of this. If an atheist declares that there is no evidence for God, and challenges you to convince him otherwise, and you take him up on this challenge, you've already lost. The name of this game is There Is No Evidence For God, Prove Me Wrong, and It's A Trap. See, you've placed them in a position where you could simply swat away any argument you provide by claiming it's been debunked, and when you get nowhere in trying to convince him, which you will because he's determined not to be convinced, he'll expect you to default back to his preferred supposition, there is no evidence for God. So it's important to identify the subterfuge and refuse accepting any argument predicated on the atheist's own terms. So let's see this in action. The atheist says, there is no evidence for God. And you reply, I certainly disagree with that claim. Can you provide any reason why I should think there's no evidence for God? He makes a claim, you ask him why you should believe it. This is the very essence of the burden of proof. Note well, however, the word we're not using here, evidence. Asking an atheist for evidence of a lack of evidence is a perfectly reasonable application of the burden of proof, but atheists struggle with abstract thinking, and this meta-evidential burden of proof, laying bare, will cause their brains to short-circuit. They'll either flatten the nested demand for evidences into a demand for evidence of God's non-existence, a demand that they naturally will shrug off, or they'll simply call it stupid or retarded, since it involves actual thinking, which is tricky. Can you provide evidence of no evidence? I suspect it's impossible myself, but if proving your claim is impossible, that only means that you shouldn't make the claim to begin with. Only in bizarro atheist world does the impossibility of proving a claim become a justification for making it. Now, I should also note that atheists have an accumulated body of folk wisdom dedicated solely to trying to rationalize why they shouldn't have to prove their negative claims. These range from misapplications of the presumption of innocence and the null hypothesis to the claim that you can prove a negative, which is false and wouldn't relieve them of the burden of proof even if it were true. Every bit of atheist folk wisdom on this topic is wrong, and I will deal with it at length in a future video, but for present purposes, we will route around this issue thusly. The atheist says, you are asking me to prove a lack of evidence? That's stupid! Retarded! I'm an atheist, which means I never have to prove anything I say. You say, fine then, if you refuse to provide any reason why I should think there is no evidence for God, I'll happily go on believing that there are perfectly valid reasons for believing in God. At this point, the atheist will realize the folly of claiming that there is no evidence for God and will make a personal vow from that day forward never to make claims they can't possibly support. Ha 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 ha! In reality, they'll continue biting at your heels like a demented chihuahua with one asinine objection after the other, and we'll deal with some of these in the follow-up video, There Is No Evidence For God, Part 2!